So first off guys, I, I referenced it in my last video. Here is how I suggest everyone consider uh, approaching the Arizona elk draw. I, really you should start with your goals and your hunting goals and then go from there. And I'm, I kind of break it down in three different uh, tiers. I break it down into a, kind of a premium late rifle elk hunt, a uh, secondary elk hunt, which is like get a bull, a bull, you know, anywhere from a spike to up to a 330 plus bull, uh, an area that's easier to draw and doesn't have as many, um, you don't need as many points to draw it. And then the third tier, which is the lowest one, which would be kind of your limited opportunity type hunt where you can hunt more but the odds of getting a bull are a little bit less just because of the populations and the tags and, and could be the weather that year. So let's crank it right off. The top rifle elk units. And now I'm not talking about early rifle elk, guys. This is different. This is a, I'm talking about late rifle elk units. The top late rifle elk units in Arizona for getting a trophy bull. Now this is, these are units that you're going to need 5 to 10 plus points to draw as a resident. And these are units where you can go into it expecting to potentially shoot a trophy bull. And a trophy, in my mind, is anywhere 330 plus. 350 plus is just a fantastic bull. And in some cases, you can get bigger than that. So um, I'm going to start with a couple of the best two rifle elk units, in my opinion, would be unit 23 and unit 27. And those are two units that are very similar terrain-wise. They have really, really big canyons, high elevation, places where bulls typically like to go and spend their winters, pretty remote. Unit 23 and Unit 27 take a few more points to get drawn as, in, as a resident and as a non-resident. As a non-resident, you can expect to draw that tag in that 15 to 17 points range. As a resident, you can expect to draw that tag in that 8 to 10 points range, depending on the year. Some years, you know, on, on the odds, like we reference go hunt a lot, some years it'll say, you know, that last year, we, all we can do is reference off last year. Well, last year, um, you know, guys with 10 points drew that tag, and then this year um, everybody with 8 points drew that tag. So generally speaking, you know, and as a non-resident, you want to kind of have that 15 plus points to really maybe potentially start planning on drawing that tag and, and trying to set a schedule for the fall. Next, 223 and 27, in my mind, the two best trophy rifle elk units would be Unit 1, which is right next to 27. They're stacked up on the Indian Reservation in New Mexico. So Unit 1, 27, and 23. And also, Unit 10 is a unit that you can shoot a big bull, and it actually will probably take a couple points. Unit 9 and Unit 8 as well. So 8, 9, and 10 are units that do have big bulls, but sometimes those bulls are found off the rim in the Grand Canyon wherein everyone hears about how good Unit 9 is and Unit 10 is and, and sometimes Unit 8 is during the archery season. Well, that typically is because all the bulls come out of the National Park and come up on the rim in Unit 9 and Unit 10 to breed during the rut. And then they typically go back and, and, ha and spend their winter grounds in the National Park. So be careful when you're trying to compare archery hunts with rifle hunts because they're not all created equal and the bulls are not always located in the same spots. So with unit 23, unit 1, unit 27, and like I said in some of those other ones, 8, 9, and 10, there are bulls that, stay, that spend their winters there and stay there year-round, big bulls. So with that, you got to kind of assume that it's going to take some some uh, ground being covered. It, these units are not gimme units. Just because there's big bulls in 27 and 23 and 1 does not mean you are not going to have to hike. These bulls require a lot of hiking, they require a lot of scouting, and they require a, you to shoot potentially across the canyon at 500 plus yards. So with that, you have to understand that this country that these bulls live in is nasty, rugged country, and that's why they're there. So always be prepared um, and understand that you may need some help when you shoot a big bull in a canyon. If you, you know, bring a buddy, um, talk to some people before you go, talk to how to get in and out of some certain areas, um, and specifically 
what happens when it snows. These areas are all areas where it can snow like crazy after Thanksgiving. And so it's an area where you need to do your research before going in there. These bulls are not going to be behind every tree. They're going to, going to require glassing, scouting, and um, really putting in the time and effort and miles almost year-round. But really after the archery hunt um, ends in September is when you should begin scouting some of these late rifle elk hunts to really get an idea where these elk are living. Typically these big bulls will live in similar canyons every year. And if you can find a group of bulls that are bachelored up again in a canyon before the elk hunt, there's a good chance they're going to be around the area. So um, that is my top tier late rifle elk hunts, unit 1, 27, 23. And then within that top tier, 8, 9, and 10 are quality rifle elk hunts that you can potentially shoot a big 330 class bull um, and simultaneously require some points to do that, as you would expect. For anyone that tries to draw Western tags, uh, the premier hunts take require more, more points. So there's the first tier.